Hello and welcome to Messing About Models with me, John. Today I'm going to be fitting a sand decoder into a Backman 4MT tank engine. And it's a type of decoder I've not fitted before. So stay tuned to see how it turns out. Today I'm going to be fitting an Ikonami uh, sound decoder into a Backwin 4MT tank. This is a type of decoder I've not used before uh, and it's a kind of intermediate type of decoder so it's got a lot more functionality than the Hornby TTS ones so you can play multiple sounds at the same time. It's more programmable um, but it's um, not quite as full featured as the, the sort of full fat type of decoders that uh, you get. Having said that, I don't think there's a great deal of difference from really looking at the specifications between this one, which was about £70, and um, the sort of full fat ones, which are £110, £120. The other advantage of this one is you don't buy a specific sound file. It comes with sound files for a variety of different locos already on board. So this one's got a variety of different uh, steam locomotives and I'll be selecting via one of the CVs the appropriate uh, project number and if I at some future date want to put this into a different locomotive I can then do that and then change things like the whistle to a Great Western whistle or um, into a merchant navy or similar. So let's head over to the workbench and see how it goes. Right, and here's the patient ready for surgery. This loco's got a little bit of sentimental value for me. It was one of the first locos I converted to DCC about 15 years ago um, yeah, when I was previously um, doing some modelling. And uh, I believe I fitted one of the, the then new Lens Silver decoders to it. And uh, not only did it obviously work well on DCC, but it improved its performance on DC as well. And uh, that that was quite amazing. It was an eye-opener to me at the time that uh, you could improve the performance of a, of a locomotive that way. So one of the things we're going to have to do is we're going to have to um, take out that decoder. I can't remember whether this loco has got a socket or not. I have a feeling I had to hardwire it. So we're going to have to uh, do a little bit of uh, open heart surgery on there. And here is the Ikonami uh, sound, digital sound decoder. Uh, it also comes with a capacitor for you to fit to act as a stay alive, which is uh, also very interesting. Often you find that you have to pay extra for that sort of feature. So I'll have a go at fitting that as well, because uh, sometimes this logo has had a little bit of problems. And uh, here is the speaker that it comes with, which uh, I'm not quite sure where it'll fit, but it's not too big and it should be fine. It's obviously a sticky pad on the back. I was originally gonna fit a, a TTS decoder into this one and I got a I uh, managed to acquire a Hornby Black 5 TTS decoder, but I chickened out uh, at the end because uh, of some of the issues with running, uh, etc. Whereas one of the options for this is to, uh, one of, as I said, this one can, these economies can, you can choose uh, between six different Steam projects that are all loaded on the chip. And one of them is for a standard for, um, locomotive. So I thought, um, let's have a go. And uh, some of the TTS decoders at the moment are going for 60 or 70 pounds if they're some of the rarer ones. So um, you're not far off the cost of an economy. And of course, like I said, you get the, uh, get the capacitor as well. And the ability, if you need to or want to, to change it over to a different locomotive. Um, Obviously, as a steam one, um, we don't have any like lighting issues. Uh, but the wiring diagram there is 
fairly straightforward. Um, so um, we're just all ready to go. Let's... Now, one of the other little handy tools that I, I bought is this uh, magnetic screwdriver from Roads and Rails, which is designed to help remove uh, screws from backbone locomotives. So uh, we'll give that a go as well. Standard 4 has got lots of screws in lots of places that we have to um, keep track of. Before we can remove the body. There we go, there's the lens silver, and that can go back in the spares box because it's a handy one. And look, it's got a plug, and this logo does have a socket, so we've uh, saved some of that hassle. Ooh, there we go. Oh, put that to one side. Now as you can see I've got some crew in here who have um, fallen about a bit so before I put the back body back on I'm going to just glue them back into place. Uh, quite a bit of weight in there, but I was. Uh, no, where do I put the speaker? Where would the speaker go? Um, this is it's always a tricky bit. It's not going to go there because that's where the chip goes. So uh, we're going to have to stick it in the cab in the coal bunker, perhaps. So that means we're going to have to open up the cab as well, which we were going to do anyway, let's face it. So. But I'll have to see if we can drill a hole to let the wires through. The trickiest part was getting the, the body off and getting access to everything and uh, if ever you uh, have problems getting it off, once you've got all the screws out you just need to ease the side tanks uh, out. Now I tried fitting the supplied speaker uh, maybe to the roof of the cab but it was just a bit too thick. So what I've done is I've swapped it out for uh, a thin iPhone speaker which once that's in place uh, doesn't take up hardly any space and it's almost invisible from the cab. Um, as you can see I've uh, already wired in the speaker and I'm just about to wire in the capacitor um, and according to the drawing the green and yellow wire needs to go to the negative side of the capacitor which is where this uh, white stripe, this grey stripe is, uh, oops, okay. and the other terminal is the positive, if I'm reading the diagram correctly. Um, so we'll just do that bit. I had to drill a hole sort of just in the top of the cab just to sort of feed the wires through. Um, but that seems to be okay. And then we'll just fix the fix the speaker with a little bit of black tack to the roof of the roof of the cab, and that should fit in quite nicely. He said. Right. So the next stage is to fit the capacitor. Um, and I'll spare you um, a 
I'll spare you the uh, sight of my soldering. Right, that's the speaker fitted into the cab. I needed to chop away a little bit of the speaker enclosure and also a bit of the uh, cab uh, where the locker box is at the top where it meets the roof just to fit it in really and it was quite a bind and I somehow managed to managed to get a glue mark on the roof of the cab which is not helpful either um, so all that remains to be done now is to put the body uh, back on the cat uh, on the chassis and fit the decoder and try and um, tidy up all the wires it all finally back together um, and I must say that that's probably one of the most difficult installations I've ever done. Um, it's, it was difficult to remove the body, it's difficult to find space to put everything in, um, it was difficult to get the body back on. Um, so back when if you're watching this retool your 4MT, make it a bit easier to install DCC um, I don't mind if you put the price up. So let's put it on the track and see um, how it sounds. And there you have it. Uh, I've set the CVs to produce the standard four exhaust and the standard four whistle. And although those are for the 460 version, the 264 version is the same. So, for just under £80, I've got a top quality decoder with a range of sounds and uh, programmable so that if I was to fit this chip into a different locomotive, I could change it. Um, that's maybe not a issue so much with the steam locomotives, but with the diesel ones, uh, that could be uh, very useful. So, if you've liked this video, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of upcoming uh, videos on the channel. And of course, if you've got any comments, men mention them below, write them below. So, see you in the next one. Bye.